Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. Today, we're gonna be going over to the clubhouse of the Chingling Nomads Motorcycle Club. It's just a couple blocks away here. They are an outlaw motorcycle club, one percenters, as people would say. And we're gonna be talking about the incident that happened a couple blocks away from their clubhouse, um, where there was a little bit of a shootout in front of like a known drug spot. All right, let's flip this around and get into it. Okay, so the spot that we're going to is on the corner of Hughes Avenue and East 180th Street. It's their clubhouse, it's been their clubhouse forever. A little bit of history of the Chingalings is they became a gang in 1966 in the Bronx. They started out as a Puerto Rican street gang and then patched over to the New Rochelle Motorcycle Club. I don't know when they switched that to the Chingalings Motorcycle Club, but that's how the story goes. They're allies. They're like uh, not all motorcycle clubs slash gangs, whatever you want to call them. I know everyone gets mad when I call them a gang. Not all of them hate each other. Their allies are the Diablos Motorcycle Club and the Hells Angels. They have kind of a weird tradition of spitting beer and whatever other alcohol they have onto the memorials and graves of their members that have died. I'll put in a video of that. They pay their respects to Tito India in the way they think he'd want to be remembered. Oh, you? oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then rum all over Tito India's picture. Eddie shares a marijuana cigarette with his fallen friend. I took some beer, gave him some, I gave him some liquor, because he was a heavy drinker, and I brew him some cocaine. It's a little bit odd to see, but hey, everyone's got their traditions. They're very serious about their traditions. Very old school type club. There's also a YouTube, it's snowing right now. It is snowing. Or hailing. Interesting. But yeah, there's some YouTube videos about them where they follow them through the Bronx. I'll be putting clips of that in. It's from like an A&E um, little documentary thing. Where they almost get uh, into a little bit of a scuffle at a party. Kind of interesting. Alright, so the club is right up here. Chuck Zito, the um, known Hells Angel, was actually a part of the Chingalings first. Then he left and became a Hells Angel and he helped found... He helped found the um, New York chapter of the Hells Angels early on. On their patches, you'll see the numbers 3 and 14, like 314 together. The 3 represents the C, the third letter of the alphabet. The 14 represents the N in Chingling Nomads. Here's the club now. Let me find a good spot to park here. Obviously, you can see where the club is, right in the corner here. Park in front of this deli. There's a nice hydrant. Okay, it seems like we're running into a bit of a storm here. But this is the corner of everything. Let's walk around here a bit. As you can see, there's a big memorial up here. I know it's windy. Have a little bit of a wind protection. Let me know what you guys think of it. There's a memorial over here. If you look up the Chingalings on Google, it says it's a house of worship, probably because this is a church right here. But yeah, here's their memorial. Very traditional, as I said. All their fallen members, of course. That is the clubhouse. So all the motorcycles, some cool motorcycles will walk by there. We'll make the loop around. Here's the block. So we're on Hughes Avenue right now. The street I just came off of was West 180th. Oh, look at this old school. I love when one part of the old school brownstone stands and the rest don't. You see, this is all new construction around it. Okay. There you go. Some nice motorcycles.
I'll put in all the clips of the footage. They got a cool, like, rustic look to them. This Corvette to add on top. Chingling's headquarters. Crazy. Okay, back to the truck. Now we're off to... We are off to where two of them were shot in a situation in the 90s. Come on, the truck looks clean even though it's a little dirty still. We gotta pull a little bit of a, a maneuver here. You guys get to watch that. I made a mistake before, this is east 180th, not west. Well, I was in front of the club, I said that. Reverse into the intersection. Is there a light here? Might be a light. You get it done however you can, guys. You get it done however you can. Alright, like I said, we're off to the area where there was like they say a half dozen people, so six people. I'll never understand why it's a half dozen. A small group of people outside having an argument in front of 2078 Arthur Avenue. Literally right around the block. We'll be there very shortly. And it's right close to the Chingling's hangout. So they probably got word something was going on. They come up and they don't exactly know what happened. This is the police don't fully know what happened that night, but shooting occurred, shooting and stabbing, so shots went off, the two Chingling members got shot, one of them named Sam Seguino, 29 years old, was shot in the stomach and later died at Jacoby Medical Center, the other one was shot and lived, then later on, the next day, Pedro... Al Monte was charged with the shooting. He was arrested in a nearby apartment, nursing his stab wound in the back from the incident. So he didn't get away uh, totally free in that situation. Is it a church now? It looks like it may be a church now. Let me park here since there's a spot. That's interesting. Nope, it's not. 2078 right there, that doorway with the red and white around it. So you could imagine this scene unfolding here on this block, right outside this spot, which I guess in 1990, June 15th, 1990, this happened. This was a known drug spot. Oh look, my truck, just not the extra door. Wow, it's windy. Wow. All right. So some of the other uh, patches you could see on there. Look at this old handle here. How old's that gotta be? Just, there we go. Some of the other patches on their jacket you'll see is FTW, which is common on a 1% percenter jacket, fuck the world. And it's CFFC, Chingling's forever, forever a Chingling. That's how that goes. So right next to the church now. Maybe church right there. Who knows? This pizza place serves tacos. Interesting, interesting. Alright, heading back. They do have um, the iron cross and swastikas on their jackets. That's ties to Nazi Germany. But they accept all members. Look at my clean truck over there. Can't get over it. Why isn't this adjusting? There we go. Yeah, they do have ties to Nazi Germany, but they accept all members. That well, seems like an odd thing. But that's kind of common in uh, motorcycle clubs, gangs, whatever you want to call them. All right, back to the truck. It's always fun to go by an active... Um, motorcycle club headquarters or clubhouse 
Um, even the Chinglings themselves said they're not as crazy as they once were because their whole thing is to keep their tribe, their culture together. And if one of them's in jail, they can't help out their other brothers or other members. So they said it's not like it used to be. I'm sure it was much crazier. Like everything else was much crazier back in the day, back in those times. I'm going to be adding all that footage that I got off of YouTube and that a and &E documentary at the end here. So I can watch that if you want to see what they were like a little bit back. It wasn't too far long ago. All right. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. It's a myth that all biker gangs are rivals. On this night, the bikers come to represent and show their colors. Peter's been waiting for his wife to join him. He spots a group of people walking into another party across the street and decides to crash. There's a party out of here. Stop. This party is a bit more upscale than the biker bash across the street. A man approaches Peter and makes the mistake of assuming he's an invited guest. asked to leave to know the bouncer. Bandit is one of the club's oldest members. His rank? Sergeant of Arms. Bandit has officially been a chingaling for more than 13 years. I like to get stoned and cruise. He looked like, uh, actually he ran head on with a bus. Caught him off guard. Impact to the heart. Stopped him right there. Generation. And what the future may hold.